Hi guys. I thought I'd do a little video of just sketching and drawing and um, I'd like to do more of these sorts of videos so I'm actually using my cell phone, my iPhone. I don't know if this is going to work at all but hey we can all have fun and experiment. So what I have here is a page of Mendelssohn uh, from this really old beautiful album that was loved by somebody so much that they actually stuck Mendelssohn's photo in the middle of it. And uh, the page says uh, Agito con Fuco on the top, and I probably just really mispronounced it, but um, it means agitated and with fire. And if you've ever seen some of these guys screech at you from on high or attack when it's nesting time, you'll know exactly why this bird fits this page. So what I usually do when I when I draw is, um, on, on some of these pages is I'll put it on some transparent paper. I'll just draw my image out on the transparent paper and then I'll try to place it, you know, make sure it's the right size and scale for the paper and make sure I like the way it sits on the page. And then I'll sketch it on the page in pencil. And then when I don't have a lot of time and I just want to get on with things, I'll use a pigment pen. Um, this is a Stadler uh, pigment pen and a 0.1, so really super thin because at this point I'd like to be able to paint over a mistake if I make a mistake or what have you. And then um, I just sketch with the pen over my pencil lines and um, eventually erase the pencil lines. And then sometimes when I have a bit more time um, or want a bit more skill, I'll just take the black ink and a quill and um, I'll do it the old fashioned way. That's always a lot of fun. So when I have it all arranged and organized, I'll, um, I'll get my paint supplies together, and this is my paint box that I tend to travel with, um, and this is the map of the paints, and it's really a good idea to make a map of your paints because a lot of the reds look alike and you just don't know which pigment you're going to be picking up unless you're really, really familiar. And I have some brushes, and I usually take out, oh, you know, four or five brushes, and I use one, <laughs> maybe two. Um, yeah, that's the way I roll. Uh, fresh water, of course. And um, I have this little piece of mirror that I got for something ridiculous, like 5p at the car boot sale. And I've got my white ink and my black ink. Um, the watercolor white is not white, and the watercolor black has a bluish hue and is not a true black either. And I use the mirror surface for that because... So then I'll take a eraser, a very gentle eraser, an art eraser, and um, go over some of the pencil lines because sometimes the pencil lines end up looking pretty messy in the whole painting. And um, I don't know, sometimes I don't bother, but most times I do. And you have to be a bit careful because uh, the paper is very old and fragile, of course, but also the eraser picks up the pencil, the lead, and um, then starts smudging it rather than taking it off the paper. So you'd want to twist and turn the eraser a little bit. Um, you know, just, just going over any kind of old paper is always a good idea to just have a gentle hand. And uh, pretty soon it looks much cleaner and neater. And you can see how very, very fine those uh, lines are from the ink pen. And then I'll grab a larger brush and um, I'll look at my paint colors and decide uh, where I want some of the paint to go. Um, now, these kinds of birds, they reflect and they reflect in a turquoisey, greeny sort of a hue and sometimes a purple hue. So I'll just look at the look at my map um, and and put some of the paint underneath. Obviously, it's a black and white bird, um, but um, it actually isn't black and white. It's more like peacock colored. So I'll take a larger brush and I'll just put some paint right on the paper. Um, 
underneath where the black is going to eventually be how well, I'll darken it but where I want a different hue to the black because the black will end up being grayish and whatever I put underneath it will end up warming it or cooling it and it will shine through eventually <laughs> after hours and I must admit that you know sometimes when I do this I think well what am I doing I don't really know what I'm doing it just sort of feels right to put those colors on first because they're the light reflective colors that you see in the bird um yeah so I just I use some turquoise and some green and um, I'll use some purple as well and just lay those colors in and then, um, and then they'll hopefully shine through You know, I was just thinking, the one good thing about paint is that you can generally paint over your mistakes, but um, watercolors are a little bit more, or a little bit less forgiving. It's not like an acrylic or, or an oil that you can just sand down when it's dry or, um, you know, paint over top and completely obliterate the bottom color. But they still are forgiving, and um, I don't tend to worry about it too much. I know that if I make a mistake um, and get a color in the wrong place, I can always go over it with a darker color, uh, you know, or even the black and then a white over top of it and start over again. Uh, but the trouble with these kinds of papers is that they're very, very um, fragile and you have to be very careful how you actually apply the colors. Um, so then I'm going to use some black, and as you can see, the black has the watercolor black has a really bluey, bluey sort of um, outline. So if you wanted to warm it up, you can afterwards by putting a bit of sepia in it or something. And um, I'm going to use two brushes. I'm going to use a very thin brush, and then my fatter brush full of water to spread it around so I don't get a big chalk of black. And you'll see what I mean. Um, have a look at this. This is just straight black watercolor and it makes that sort of a, obliterates everything underneath that look. But if you take a wet brush or a damp brush, not a, not a totally soaking larger brush, and, um, and just spread it around a little bit and all of a sudden, you know, it becomes a sort of a translucent darkness to the bird um, and uh, to the feathers and you have that color shining through. And so it goes, small brush, big brush. I usually paint with two brushes in my hand and possibly one in my mouth and one in my hair. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Um, and I just start darkening the feathers on this magpie. But, um, or I've decided that the magpie is going to have the white feathers. I haven't put any color on it yet. Um, I think that uh, that will be in part two because I'm starting to lose the light. It's three o'clock in the afternoon here in England and um, winter time and it's all starting to get just a little bit too dark for me so I'm, I'm quite confident I know what I'm doing now but another 10-15 minutes I won't be able to see very well because I'll only have the overhead lights. As I go along with the small brush, I'm starting to lose the pigment off of it. It's, it's being left on the page, and I'll have to go and reload that brush with the black. Um, and then, then I'll have to use the bigger brush to um, spread out the darkness a little bit. It's not so very dark.
Well, that's almost about it for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this little video, and I hope I'm not boring you all to tears. I'll try to paint some more tomorrow, and then show you part two. There'll probably be a part three and a part four, <laughs> knowing me and knowing these days. But yeah, a little bit of a, a bird on Mendelssohn, and we'll see how it goes. Bye.